Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Today, we're going to have a lecture. You're all going to have a lecture on the anatomy of the pelvis and also the lower spine. So, there are two components that we're going to discuss today. The pelvis and also the lower spine. Okay, for the introduction part, so we're going to start with the, to discuss on the bony pelvis first. So the bony pelvis is consists of hip bone, sacrum, and also the coccyx. So these are the components of the bony pelvis. For the hip bone, it developed from the fusions of the tree bone. Okay, we have the ilium, okay, we have the ischium, and we also have the uh, the pubis, okay, the pubis, ischium, and also the ilium. And then for the sacrum, okay, it developed from the fusion of the five sacral vertebrae. So at the back there, we have the sacrum. So the sacrum is fused together. Okay. And then the coccyx, the small, uh, the small bone here, it developed from the fusion of four rudimentary coccygeal vertebrae. So altogether, the pelvic girdle is equal to the hip bone, okay, and also the sacrum is complete set of the uh, body pelvis, the pelvic girdle. Okay. So what is the function of the bony pelvis? <clears throat> the function of the bony pelvis is to protect the pelvic viscera. Viscera means organ. So that we have a several organ that present inside the bony pelvis. So it try to protect the this pelvic viscera. And also support the weight of the body. Okay, why? Uh, how? By transferring the weight of the upper body from the axial skeleton to the lower appendicular skeleton. That is the way that it support the weight of the body. Okay, it transfer the weight from the upper body part. Okay, from the axial skeleton to the lower appendicular skeleton. The third function of the bony pelvis is to provide attachment for the muscles. There are several muscles that attach to the bony pelvis. In females, so we have a special uh, function for female. Uh, it provides for the bony support for the birth canal. So it transform, uh, it transform or become a birth canal okay, for female. Okay, <clears throat> for the orientations of the pelvis. Whenever we put the body into the anatomical positions, uh, I hope you still remember what is the anatomical positions. Eh? I have teach you during the first block. So whenever you put the body in the anatomical positions, ASIS or anterior superior spine, okay, and also the anterior aspect of the pubic symphysis, it line, it lie in the it lie eh, in the same vertical plane. So I mean that if you uh, draw a line from up to down here. Uh, that line is a 90 degree line. So, uh, it, it, uh, this part, the ASIS and also the pubic synthesis, it lie in the same vertical plane. Okay, for the hip bone, it's now that I have mentioned early, the hip bone, it developed from the fusion of the tree bone. Okay, we have the ilium, we have the ischium, we have the cubis. Okay. So these three bones are fused together at the acetabulum. Okay, acetabulum. I hope you still remember the musculoskeletal block. Okay, where is the location of the acetabulum? Okay. And then the hip bone are joined at the pubic symphysis. Okay. Hip bone here is joined huh, at the pubic symphysis. Uh, hip bone articulate with the sacrum. Okay, the hip bone here it articulate with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. Okay, the joint between the sacrum and also the ilium. Okay, so this is the hip bone. Okay, it developed from uh, it uh, it developed from the fusion of three bone. Okay, okay, this picture just to show you uh, the big uh, image of the hip bone. So we have the ilium, okay, uh, brownish in color, and then we have the ischium, uh, bluish in color, and then the pubis reddish in color. So this three bone it form the hip bone. Hip bone. 
Okay. For the ileum, let's start to discuss on the ileum first. So this is the ileum. So there are several land body, uh, bony landmark that you have to know. Okay. That present on the ileum. Okay. So the, and then we have the ala of ileum. So this is the ala of ileum. Ala of ileum is like a wing. Okay. For the ileum. Okay. It's very broad. Okay. Ala of the ileum. And then we have the body of the ileum. Okay, so the, uh, here is around here the body of the ilium. Okay, and then we have the iliac crest. Okay, uh, we have the iliac crest here, the rough area, the iliac crest, and then we have the iliac fossa. Okay, and this is the iliac fossa. The iliac fossa is slightly um, what we call that. Uh, this area is actually is important for the attachment of the muscle, okay? iliacus muscle. And then we have the AS, ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. And down here we have the anterior inferior iliac spine. It's a projection that present on the ilium. Okay. This projection is present on the anterior aspect of the ilium. And at the back there, we also have the uh, posterior projections, which is the posterior superior iliac spine and also the posterior inferior iliac spine. Okay. So these are the <coughs> Uh, the component of the, uh, the, the the structure or the body landmark that presents on the ileum. Okay, now we're going to this, uh, proceed with the ischium. Okay. So there are several uh, body landmark that you have to know that presents on the ischium. Okay, this is the part of the body of the ischium. Okay, the body of ischium. And then uh, we have the ischial ramus or ramus of the ischium. Okay. And then we have the ischial spine. Okay, this is the ischial spine. It's a very sharp projection here. Okay. And then we have the ischial tuberosity. Okay, this is the ischial tuberosity. And this is the ischial ramus. This is it, the ischial tuberosity. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the uh, pubis. For the pubis, we have the body of pubis. Okay. We have the body of the pubis. And then we have the uh, superior ramus of the pubis. This is the superior ramus. And then we have the inferior ramus. Okay. The ramus is project from the body of the pubis. Superior ramus, inferior ramus. Okay. And then we have the pubic crest. Okay. And then we have the pubic tubercle. Hmm, pubic tubercle. At the end here, we have the pubic tubercle. And then we have the pectin pubis. Okay, this is the pectin pubis, okay, which is the which is the pectinal line of the pubis, and then uh, subcubic angle. Okay, we will discuss further later. What is the subcubic angle? And whenever we join this bone together, so there is a presence of the obturator foramen. Okay, it forms the obturator foramen. Okay, it's like a hall structure. Okay. Okay, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the sacrum. So this is the uh, sacrum. So the sacrum is made up of five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the, the five bone fused together. And the sacrum is a triangular in shape. And it is divided into a central mass. And the central mass is located at the middle. And then we have the lateral mass located at the lateral. Okay. So we, uh, this conne connection is actually uh, uh, shown by the transverse ridge here. If you see here, we have the transverse ridge. Okay. And then on the anterior aspect or anterior surface of the sacrum, so this is the uh, anterior surface of the sacrum, we have the ala mm, of the sacrum, which is a, it's a wing shape. Mm, it's uh, the upper part of the lateral mass. Okay, and then we have the four anterior sacral foramina. One, two, three, four. Okay, the on the on the right and also on the left. Okay, so, uh, on the right we have four. On the left we have four. Okay, and then we have the sacral promontory. Okay, this is the prominent part you know, of the anterior surface of the sacrum. Okay. And then on the posterior surface, if you see compared to if you compare if you want to compare if you compare okay the anterior surface from the posterior surface, the anterior surface is smooth, but the posterior uh, surface is rough. 
And then these are the uh, bony landmark that present on the posterior aspect or posterior surface of the sacrum. We have the median okay, sacral crest. We have the natural sacral crest. Okay, this is the elevated portion of the, uh, the presence on the posterior surface of the sacrum. Okay, and then we have the posterior sacral foramina okay, on the posterior aspect. And then we have the sacral cornua, cornua okay, or horn, it's a projection. Okay, and then we have the sacral hiatus. Okay, this is the sacral hiatus. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is the picture just to show you the lateral aspect okay, of the sacrum. Okay, whenever you cut the sacrum into two half, so inside there we can find the, there is a present of the sacral canal. Okay, and this part is the sacral promontory, the prominent part that uh, the present on the entire uh, surface of the sacrum projected toward anteriorly. Okay, uh, now we're going to proceed to discuss on the coccygeal vertebra. Okay, it's very small uh, bone here. Okay, so it is consists of four the rudimentary vertebra. One, two, three, four. That fused together, and it also has two surfaces, which is the pelvic surface or anterior surface and the dorsal surface. The dorsal surface, this is the dorsal surface. The base of the the base of the uh, coccyx vertebra, it has the oval facet for the articulate uh, articulation with the apex of the sacrum. So this is the apex of sacrum that articulate with the base of the uh, coccyx. On its lateral part, there, there is a two cornua. Okay, on its lateral part, there is a two cornua. Uh, if you see there, it's, sorry, it's very small. There is a coccygeal cornua. Okay, uh, it's also the uh, horn-like structure. Okay, sacral cornua. That projected uh, upward, and coccyx number one has the special about the coccyx number one. It has a, a rudimentary thrombus process. If you see here, this is the rudimentary thrombus process. It's very small. The remaining vertebra are represented by the nodule of the bone. The remaining uh, vertebra is only represented by the nodule of the bone. Okay. Now we're going to discuss on the classification of the pelvis. So the, the pelvis is divided into two, which is the false pelvis. Okay, if you see here, above here is a false pelvis. It also known as the pelvic ma pelvis major or greater pelvis. Okay, actually this pelvis, uh, false pelvis is part of the abdominal cavity, the lower part of the abdominal cavity. And then we have the true pelvis, this is the true pelvis, which also known as a pelvis minor, okay, lesser pelvis, Actually, the, the true pelvis is a true pelvic cavity. Okay. It lies inferior to the uh, pelvic brim. Okay. Okay. So just, uh, this picture just to show you the true pelvis. Okay. This is the true pelvis. Okay. The whole part here is the abdominal cavity. So uh, the true pelvis actually is the lower part of the abdominal cavity. And this is the, sorry, sorry. This is the false pelvis. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I. If it back, sorry, uh, for the correction, this is the false pelvis, okay? And uh, the whole part here is actually belong to the abdominal cavity. The, the, the false pelvis actually is the lower part of the abdominal cavity, okay? This is the false pelvis. Okay? And this is the true pelvis, okay? If we see here, okay? Okay, so, uh, we're going to discuss on the false pelvis first. Okay, the false pelvis is actually is a greater pelvis. It's a, it's a continuation of the inferior part of the abdominal cavity. It's just a continuation of the inferior part of the abdominal cavity. Okay, this is the false pelvis. Okay, I show you just now. This is the true pelvis. Okay. Okay, it lies superior to the pelvic uh, pelvic brim. Okay, above the pelvic brim. Okay, what are the boundary? Okay, of the false pelvis, the pelvis. Anteriorly, definitely we have the abdomen, abdominal wall. Posterior, laterally we have the iliac fossa. So this is the iliac fossa. And posteriorly we have the uh, L5. Okay, this is the L5 and S1 sacral vertebra number one. Okay, L5 and S1. Okay, so the content of the false pelvis uh, is the abdominal viscera. Okay. 
the like the ilium and also the sigmoid colon. Uh, okay, how about the true pelvis? Okay, this is the true pelvis. Okay, the true pelvis is located between the pelvic inlet, this is the pelvic inlet, and this is the pelvic outlet. Okay, inferiorly, it is limited by the pelvic diaphragm. Here we have the pelvic diaphragm. Okay, the content of the the content of the true pelvis is the urinary bed, the, the terminal part of the ureter, and also the re reproductive organ for the female, and also the rectum. So these are the content. The structure or the organ that present in the uh, pelvic pelvic viscera. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the pelvic inlet? Inlet. So the pelvic inlet actually is equal to the pelvic brim. It also known as a superior pelvic aperture. It's opening. Okay. Uh, and then the pelvic outlet here is also uh, is called as inferior pelvic aperture. And this uh, pelvic outlet is closed by the pelvic diaphragm. Okay. <clears throat> For the pelvic inlet or pelvic brim, okay, this, uh, it, uh, this is the structure that form the boundary of the pelvic inlet. Okay. Okay. Uh, at the front here, uh, it is bounded by the superior margin of the pubic symphysis. And going to the lateral, so we have the Posterior body of the pubic crest. So this is the pubic crest. Okay, the posterior body of the pubic crest from the uh, from the boundary of the pubic inlet. Okay, and then we have the iliopectineal line. Okay, right, iliopectineal line, and then uh, the anterior border of ala of the sacrum. Okay, anterior border of ala of the sacrum, and then the, at the back there we have the sacral promontory. So these are the boundary that form the pelvic inlet. Okay, altogether you can see that it, when we we draw a line like this. Okay, this is the pelvic inlet, the pelvic brim. Okay. Okay, so inside there we have the pelvic cavity. Okay. Say, how about the pelvic outlet? So it is bounded by the inferior margin of the pubic symphysis. So this is the inferior margin of the pubic symphysis. And then inferior margin of the pubis. Okay. And going toward the lateral, we have the ischial tuberosity. And then at the back there, we have the sacrotuberous ligament. Yeah. And then finally, at the back here, we have the tip of the coccyx. So this is the pelvic outlet. And for the wall of the pelvic cavity, okay, if you see here, this is the wall of the pelvic cavity. So we have the anterior wall, uh, pelvic wall, anterior pelvic wall, we have lateral pelvic wall, we have the posterior pelvic wall, and pelvic floor. For the anterior pelvic wall, it is formed by the pubis symphysis. So this pubis symphysis is formed the anterior pelvic wall, okay. Uh, this is the pubic symphysis. Okay, this is the pubic symphysis that form the anterior pelvic wall. Not only that, uh, we also have the body of the pelvis. Okay, this is the bo uh, this is the uh, body of the pelvis that also form the anterior pelvic wall, and also the pubic ramus. Okay, superior pubic ramus, inferior pubic uh, superior pubic ramus, and also the inferior pubic ramus. Okay, this part that form the anterior pelvic wall. Okay. How about the lateral wall? Lateral wall it is formed by the uh, lateral aspect of the uh, ilium, ischium, and also the obturator internus muscle. Okay. And then uh, posterior pelvic wall, it is formed by the sacrum. In the back, then we have the sacrum. Okay. The coccyx. Okay. The coccyx. Okay. And then we have the piriformis muscle that form the posterior pelvic wall. How about the pelvic flow? Okay. The pelvic flow is formed by the pelvic diaphragm. If you see here, this is the pelvic diaphragm. There are several muscles that form the pelvic diaphragm. Okay. Okay, the pelvic diaphragm is composed of the levator ani muscle and also the coccygus muscle. Of the levator ani muscle, we have three in number. We have the tuber rectalis muscle. Okay. This is the tuber rectalis. If you see the extension of this muscle is from the pubic bone toward the rectum. And then at the, at the behind here, we have the tuber coccygus muscle. The the it attaches the pubic bone toward the coccyx. 
And then we have the idiococcygus muscle attached to the idiom to the coccyx. And then when in the back there, we have the uh, coccyx here. Okay, so the name is based on the attachment from where it is originated and to where it being attached to. Okay, the muscle, uh, the name of the muscle here. And then we have the coccygus muscle at the back here. Okay, the ischial coccygus muscle. Okay, this is the levator and line muscle. This is the coccygus muscle. Okay, this is the pelvic flow. Okay, pelvic flow. Uh, this is the superior view. Whenever you view the structure from superiorly. Okay. And then we have the hole here. Okay, you know the hole. What is the 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 the, the respective function of the hole? Okay, the pelvic diaphragm support the pelvic the viscera. Okay, all the muscle here it support the pelvic organ. Okay, now, uh, we have the sigmoid colon, we have the rectum, you have uterus and the urinary bladder. This muscle, uh, this muscle support this structure. Okay, and then now we're going to discuss on the joint and ligament of the pelvic girdle. Okay, the primary joint of the pelvic girdle are the sacroiliac joint. This is the sacroiliac joint, the joint between the sacrum and also the uh, ilium. And then we have the pubic, symp pubic symphysis. So this is the primary joint of the pelvic girdle. Okay. For the sacroiliac joint, it is a strong joint. It is a weight-bearing compound joint. Okay, it's a very strong joint. And then we have a sacroiliac ligament, okay, sacroiliac ligament that hold this joint. We have the anterior sacroiliac ligament, we have the posterior sacroiliac ligament, and interior sacroiliac ligament, okay. Okay, for the uh, sac anterior sacroiliac ligament, if you see here, this is the anterior sacroiliac ligament, okay. This is the anterior part of the fibrous capsule of the synovial part of the joint. So this is the anterior sacroiliac ligament. And then uh, in between this bone, we have the interior sac uh, sacroiliac ligament. Okay. And at the back there, we have the posterior sacroiliac ligament. Okay. The interior sacroiliac ligament, it lies deep between the tuberosity of the sacrum and also the ilium. Okay. Uh, for the posterior sacroiliac ligament, uh, it is actually posterior external continuation of the same fibrous tissue. And then uh, the other ligament that also present is a sacrotuberous ligament. So if you see here, this is the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay, it passes from the posterior part of the ilium, passes from the posterior aspect of the ilium, lateral sacrum, okay, and then coccyx. To the ischial tuberosity. Okay, to the ischial tuberosity. Okay, <clears throat> and then uh, it transforms the sciatic notch of the hip bone into a large sciatic foramen. Okay. Okay, and this, and then we have the other ligament here. We have the uh, sacro, sacrospinous ligament. Okay, if you see here, this is the sacrospinous ligament. Okay, sacrospinous ligament. Uh, it passing through the uh, from the lateral part of the sacrum uh, toward the uh, end uh, from the lateral sacrum and opposite to the ischial spine. Okay, so uh, just now we have the uh, very large uh, sciatic foramen. And this, this sacrospinous ligament, uh, it divides this very large centric foramen into a, a two foramina, which is the greater centric foramina. Here we have at the bottom, above here, we have the greater centric foramina. And we have the smaller one here is a lesser sciatic foramen. Okay. Here, here greater sciatic foramen, and here we have the lesser sciatic foramen. And it is divided by the this ligament, the sacrospinous ligament. Okay. And then uh, for the pubic symphysis, okay, pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis is a secondary cartilaginous joint. Okay, it consists of the fibrocartilaginous interpubic disc. Okay, in uh, in the middle here we have the interpubic disc. Okay, and uh, the fibro. Uh, uh, <coughs> Okay, this uh, 
fibro, uh, pubic symphysis it's surrounding the ligament okay and then uh, this uh, this pubic symphysis it unite the body of the pubic bone in the median plane so in the middle uh, here we have the uh, body of the pubic bone okay on the right side we have the body of the pubic bone on the left side okay so the pubic symphysis here it unite okay the pubic bone in the median plane the ligament are taken at the superior portion here. If you see here, it taken at the superior and also the inferior portion, okay, inferior margin and superior margin, to form a superior pubic ligament and also the inferior pubic ligament. Okay. For the superior pubic ligament, okay, it connect the super uh, superior aspect of the pubic bodies and also the interior pubic bodies. Okay, the superior aspect of the uh, of pubic bodies, superior aspect, uh, superior aspect of the pubic bodies, and also the interpubic disc. Okay, in uh, it extends laterally as, uh, as far as okay to, to the pubic cubicle. Okay, and for the inferior pubic ligament, is a thick arch of fiber. Okay, if you see here, it form a thick arch of fiber. It connect the inferior aspect of the joint component. Okay. And then we have the lumbosacral joint. Okay, lumbosacral joint is a joint between the okay lumbar, okay lumbar, L five and also the sacrum. Okay, you see here we have the the the, the lum, uh, lumbar, okay vertebra, and then we have the sacrum. Here, okay, and then uh, this. Uh, this uh this lumbar sacral joint okay it is uh, strengthened okay strengthened by the iliolumbar ligament okay if you see here it is uh, strengthened by the iliolumbar ligament okay that radiate from the transverse process of the L5 okay, toward the ilium okay it's strengthened by this ligament iliolumbar ligament And then the secondary uh, sacral uh, single joint is a secondary cartilaginous joint with the IV disc. So there is a present of the IV disc between the uh, lumbar number five and also the sacrum, sacrum number one. Number one. Fibrocartilage and ligament joint effect, uh, join effects of the sacrum to the breast of the coccyx. Eh, sorry, sorry. This is uh, the joint between the sacrum and also the coccyx. So I correct back my, uh, my statement just now. Now we're going to discuss on the sacrococcygeal joint. Okay, the sacrococcygeal joint is actually is a joint between the sacrum and also coccyx. Okay, so the sacrum. Okay, so we have the sacrum here, and then we have the uh, coccyx here. Okay, the sacrococcygeal joint. Okay, the joint between the sacrum and also the coccyx down here is a secondary cartilaginous joint with the IV disc. So there is an intervertebral disc between the uh, sacrum and also the uh, coccyx. Okay. So here, this is the location of the sacrococcygeal joint. Okay. It's not here. Okay. I correct my statement. Okay. Because we are now going to discuss on the sacrococcygeal joint. Okay. Not the lumbosacral joint that we have discussed previously. Okay. And then uh, anterior and posterior sacrococcygeal ligament. Uh, if you see here, we have the uh, ligament, okay, that strengthen this joint. Okay, here we have the posterior sacrococcygeal ligament, okay, that strengthen this joint. Okay, the joint between the sacrum and also the coccyx. Okay, now we're going to proceed with the pelvic inlet measurement. Okay, so the parameter here, we have the true conjugate, we have the diagonal conjugate, and also the transverse diameter. Okay, so this is the true conjugate. Okay, this is the diagonal conjugate. Okay, and then this is the transverse diameter. Okay. Okay, uh, what is the true conjugate? Actually, the true conjugate is the anterior posterior diameter. When we, uh, anterior posterior diameter, when we draw a line okay, from the sacral promontory here, 
Okay, and this is a sacral promontory, promontory toward the supreme margin of the pubic synthesis. Okay, so this is the supreme margin of the pubic synthesis. So this is the true conjugate. So the length of the true conjugate is actually uh, 11 centimeters. And for the diagonal conjugate, we, we, uh, how, we, how we measure the diagonal conjugate, we draw a line from the sacral promontory, from sacral promontory here, to, toward the inferior margin of the cubic synthesis. This is the inferior margin of the cubic synthesis. This is the diagonal conjugate. So the length is about 12.5 centimeter. So it is longer than two conjugate. And the transverse diameter is at the widest distance across the pelvic rim. Okay, it's about 13.5 centimeter. Okay, the widest di diameter of the pelvic rim you draw from here to it here. Okay. Okay, so the transverse diameter is larger. Okay, in pubic inlet com compared to the true conjugate. Okay. Okay, how about the pelvic outlet measurement? So we have the anterior posterior diameter, AP diameter. AP diameter is about uh, 13.5 centimeter. And transverse diameter, okay, 11 centimeter. This is the pelvic outlet measurement. Eh? Okay, so this is the anterior posterior outlet or anterior posterior diameter, 13.5 centimeter. Okay, anterior posterior diameter, we draw a line from the lower margin of the pubic synthesis. Okay, the uh, lower, lower margin of the pubic synthesis toward the sacrococcygeal joint. So if you see here, this is the joint between the sacrum and also the coccyx. Okay, this is the how we draw a line. Okay. So it's about 13.5 centimeters. So anterior posterior diameter is longer compared to the transverse diameter in the pelvic outlet. Okay, the transverse diameter, we draw a line between the ischial tuberosity. Okay, between the ischial tuberosity. Okay, now we're going to discuss on the differences between the male and also the female pelvis. Okay, in terms of the size, they have a different false pelvis, pelvic inlet, pelvic outlet, subcubic angle. Okay, these are different between the male and also the female pelvis. Okay, so in general, male pelvis is thick and heavier compared to the female. Okay, the female is more thin and lighter because of the body size. Nah. And then the greater pelvis or the pelvic major, usually in male is deep, okay, greater pelvis. But for the female, it's shallow. For the lesser pelvis or minor pelvis, it is narrow and deep, very deep. But here for the female, it's wide and shallow. Here, is, shallow is very important because it's for the, because the female uh, pelvis, is, uh, they have a function for the birth canal. It should be shallow, okay? Not deep like the male. And also wide. Okay, allow for the uh, movement of the baby okay, through, uh, passing through the birth canal. And then the pelvic inlet, the supra pelvic aperture, uh, for the male is heart shaped, but for the male, uh, female is oval and rounded, it's a very big opening. There, okay? And for the pelvic outlet, it's comparatively small in male, okay? but for the female, it's large because it serves its purpose for the female. Okay? And then the pubic arch or sub pubic angle is narrow. Okay, narrow, but for the female, white. So everything for female is very white, okay, very large. The optorectal foramen for male is round, oval for female. Whenever it, uh, it is oval in shape, so mean it become more larger, uh, the, the, the space will be more, okay. The acetabulum is greater in male, larger is large in male, and because of the body size, now, and then in female is small. So this is gender difference in the pelvis. If you see here, this is the subcubic angle, okay. Uh, this is the for male, this is the for the female, subcubic angle here is greater in the female compared to the male. The female, yeah, is the pelvic inlet yeah, is a heart shape, okay, here is oval shape, okay. Okay. Okay, so the, there is a variations in the pelvic shape, okay. Pelvic can be classified uh, according to the shape of the inlet. Okay, we have the gynecoid type of the pelvic bone. We have the android, we have the anthropoid, we have the platypoid. So this is the gynecoid, this is the android. Huh? Android is a heart shape, uh, anthropoid and platypoid. Uh, plat uh, platypeloid, sorry, platypeloid. Okay, platypeloid. Okay, for the gynecoid, so this is the gynecoid. It's a typical female pelvis, okay? typical one. Okay, usually it can be found in the 50% of women. So this pelvis is ideal for the vaginal delivery. Okay, so 
most of the female is having this kind of the pelvis. Okay. Uh, it is a rounded, slightly oval inlet. So if you see here, slightly oval inlet, uh, uh, oval compared to the male, definitely it's a heart shape. And uh, it has a straight pelvic side wall. Okay, straight, uh, the straight, uh, the, the side wall here is a straight, not like the female, uh, not like male, it's a very shallow. Okay, but here is a straight because it serves a purpose for the birth canal. So, uh, and then uh, the the side side wall also is a very roomy, okay? roomy pelvic cavity, it's very big space lah. Okay, allow for the uh, baby to pass into, and it also had good sacral curve. Okay, its curved spine are also not prominent. Okay, its curved spine is not prominent lah in the gynecoid pelvis okay? because uh, we don't want to the head of the baby is stuck there. Okay, and then the subcubic arch is very wide yeah? in gynecoid pelvis. Okay. And then for the android pelvis, also this is the for male. Okay, it is present in most male. Lah. Okay, and but somehow there are also some female also having this kind of uh, android pelvis. One third of uh, white woman and one sixth of non white woman. Okay, the pelvic inlet definitely is a heart shape. It's uh, like a heart. Okay, due to the why uh, it is heart shape because of the due to the prominent of the sacrum. This sacrum here is a very prominent. Okay. And then the pelvic funnel from above uh, downward is converged uh, side wall. So it be, uh, be converge, become from above here toward the down here, there, there becomes smaller. Okay. Space is become small. Okay. And then uh, it also has a narrow subcubic uh, arch. And there is a prominent spine. Okay, prominent spine, this is spine there. And then for the anthropoid pelvis, it present in some males and females. 25% in white women and 55 50% uh, of the non white white. Uh, for the anthropod pelvis, the pelvic in the, the AP diameter is greater than the transverse diameter. Okay, this is special about the anthropod pelvis. AP diameter is greater than the uh, transverse diameter. But for the 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 the, 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 the pelvis is a uh, reverse. Okay. Here yeah, longer, right? Okay. And then it has long and narrow pelvic canal. Okay, long, narrow pelvic canal. Okay, with long sacrum. Okay, very long sacrum. So it's very hard for the baby to pass it through. With uh, for those who are female having this kind of the anthropoid pelvis. Uh, but uh, it has a straight, uh, straight uh, side, uh, pel uh, pelvic side wall. And for the platypoloid pelvis, it is uncommon for both sexes lah. Uh, usually it present in three percent of women. Uh, platypoloid, platypoloid, platypoloid pelvis it appears slightly flattened. Okay, and uh, because the transverse diameter is greater than epi diameter, so uh, the the uh, epi uh, the pelvic inlet it uh, like a kidney in shape. Okay, because of the the transverse diameter is greater than anterior posterior diameter, so it appears like a kidney shape. Okay, the pelvic inlet. Okay. And then the sacral promontory push forward. Sacral promontory is pushing forward. So these are the the all the the the, the all the, the 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 different type of the pelvic the different type of the pelvic wall that we have. And we have the anthropoid, endoid, anycoid, and platypeloid. Okay. Thank you.